Hey guys, happy new year. It is a brand new year, the year 2020, and I hope you're as excited as I am to see what the new year will bring. Um, I uh, have always kind of struggled a little bit with, um, not depression, but just um, kind of like dread, I guess. I'm not really sure what the word is. I, don't, I guess anxiety, um, but uh, I have found a story in the Bible that has really um, helped me and encouraged me in this. And so I just thought I would share it with you guys today because maybe some of you guys have that same feeling of kind of like dread when you wake up in the mornings or you don't really know what the day holds. So you're a little apprehensive or anxious. And, um, and I really have found that the key is praise the key is thanksgiving um so starting your day with thanksgiving is really going to be the key to your mindset for the rest of the day um so anyways i want to share this story with you okay so this is from second chronicles uh, 20 and this is when king jehoshaphat was ruling and um so there are these um, armies of these other tribes that are coming to um, to declare war on Jehoshaphat. So, um, so he has messengers that are coming to tell him that a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. Um, and Jehoshaphat was terrified, um, it says, uh, by this news, and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O, o our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your uh, friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can overcome, I mean, we can come to stand. They can't overcome too, but he says, <laughs> we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us and you will hear us and rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. So basically they're saying, um, look at these people, look at how they rep <laughs> he's saying, look at how these people are repaying us um, for our kindness and going around them and not destroying them when we came to live here. Um, now see how they reward us for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you have, which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children. Don't you think they were probably very fearful? They have armies, several armies marching against them. So they're standing there with all of their families, like just crying out to the Lord, what do we do? Um, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Beniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of, of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people. So the Spirit of the Lord has landed among this person, has come upon this person, and this person is going to speak um, from the Spirit. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jer Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. So kind of strange advice they're getting from the Lord, right? They're 
they're just supposed to go out and um, and take their positions as if they were going to fight, but they're not actually going to fight. Um, then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed, listen to this, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord calls the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. I think that's amazing. Um, and then uh, it goes on to say that on the fourth day they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that, um, that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. So it's called the the Valley of Blessing, um, or in um, Hebrew, it's called the Valley of Baraka. And um, and then, let's see, verse 29 says, When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. And I love that it says on every side. I don't know what, um, this is the... Um, New Living Translation Bible, but um, I don't know what all the other versions say, but I love that it says it gave him rest on every side because that just reminds me that when we are facing things that seem insurmountable, um, nothing like, I, I mean, I don't know how many of us have had to stand there and um, and kind of just wait in preparation for our kids and our families just to be killed. Um, many of us have not had to go through something like that, like these people were. Like they just knew we were going to be defeated. Like you know, um, and but whatever you're facing in your life, whether it's um, job situations or family situations or marriages that are falling apart or kids that are rebellious or whatever it is. Um, it seems insurmountable at the time um, to where you can't see around it and I love that it says it gave him rest on every side because it's not a matter of um, okay well at least this part of my life is going well this part is not so I'm gonna hold on to this part and um, and worry about it and dread it and be anxious over it because there's nothing anyone can do about it and that's just not true that's not the case um, God gives us peace that we can't even understand um, and his word says that I mean that we can't even comprehend we can't even understand the peace that he's giving us about our lives about our situations um, we're all going to go through stuff and we've all been through stuff that is heartbreaking and um, and seems insurmountable but he is the Prince of Peace he can give us rest on every side on every part of our lives we don't have to hold on to any of them and say well this is mine to worry about um, it's all his it's all his we can lay it down we can give him praise we can give him thanks for being a God who never changes and never leaves us and um, we don't have to pick up any of those burdens anymore they're his um, I think sometimes we feel like um, 
by us worrying about something that we're actually making some sort of progress toward a a um, a good result or a good end or um, a good outcome. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but we're not supposed to be anxious for anything. I mean, like anything. And and that seems incredible to say, but God is incredible. He can handle your burdens, the burdens that you don't want to lay down. That's why we worry. It's it's about control. It's about um, if I hold on to this tight enough, and I worry about it enough, and I stress about it enough, and if I think about it enough, then I'm going to come up with a solution to this, and I'm going to fix this problem. It's all about control. Nothing about worrying. Nothing about anxiety. Um, leaves room for God and His power to come in and bring peace to the whole situation. So, um, so that's my encouragement for you um, because this encourages me. I love that it says um, that King Jehoshaphat sent singers ahead of the army. Um, so he didn't even put his, his people on the front line who he knew could help defend his family, his kingdom. He put singers, he put worshipers, he put musicians out in front of them who were going to play music and they were going to sing praises to God um, because they believed who God said he was. And that's who I want to be um, and that's who I want you um, to be, that you have that incredible faith that you know no matter what um, God is still good God is still on the throne um, no matter what we're facing no matter what tragedies um, come our way um, that he's still there he's still good he has the power to give you peace in every single situation and on every single side so um, that is my hope for the new year for all of you um, that is my hope for myself and for my husband and my kids um, that we just remember to praise him in the storms that we remember to um, call out to him and um, worship him for who he is and um, and that will give us just such a, a great amount of peace um, because he loves to hear from us and he loves um, he loves our love he loves to know that we love him and we adore him and we praise and we honor him so that is my wish and my blessing on you this year for 2020 and um, I hope this has encouraged you in some way and I hope you will dig into the word yourself and find your own um, special um, special scriptures special um, accounts in the Bible that will give you um, will give you encouragement and um, that you can kind of hold on to and remember in tough times. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.